Insertion, Innervation, and Function of the Gluteus Maximus The gluteus maximus muscle builds the most superficial layer of the dorsal gluteal musculature and so forms the surface anatomy of the gluteal region or buttocks. The innervation is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve, a branch of the sacral plexus. Numerous vessels and nerves run under the gluteus maximus muscle, including the sciatic nerve, the pudendal nerve, and the superior gluteal vessels. The muscle originates from the sacrum, dorsal part, ilium behind the posterior gluteal line, the thoracolumbar fascia, and the sacrotuberous ligament. Its caudal fibers insert at the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. On the contrary, the cranial fibers go over into the iliotibial tract, a strong fibrous band at the outside of the thigh inserting at the lateral condyle at the tibia. The gluteus maximus muscle is the most powerful extensor and external rotator of the hip. It also supports the stabilization of the hip joint. The contraction of the cranial fibers leads to abduction, whereas the contraction of the caudal fibers causes an adduction. The iliotibial tract enhances the lateral thigh fascia and thus relieves the pressure of the femur. That is also known as tension band principle.
AnimatedAnatomy.com. Let's start by explaining the biceps femoris. The biceps femoris has two heads, the short head and the long head. The short head has the origin on the linea asperia of the femur. And here is the linea asperia. And right here it says short head of the biceps, okay? Then the long head has the origin on the ischial tuberosity here on ischium. If you look at it here, here it says biceps. It's right there where it originates. Now this muscle inserts on the head of the fibula. The head of the fibula later articulates with the back of the lateral condyle of tibia. This muscle is innervated by the common peroneal nerve and the tibial nerve. The tibial nerve long head and the short head common peroneal nerve. It serves for the flexion of the knee joint, lateral rotation of the knee joint and also it extends the hip joint. Here we have now the right semitendinosus muscle. The semitendinosus muscle also has the origin on the ischial tuberosity. If you look at it here, you will see it says biceps and then it says semitendinosus. The semitendinosus muscle has the insertion of the facet serenus. If you remember, in previous lesson I have mentioned one muscle called the sartorius muscle that also had the insertion on the facet serenus. The facet serenus was actually the connective tissue of joint insertion of three muscles. Here in our case we have the semitendinosus. In previous lesson we had the sartorius. And there is also the kratzelis muscle that I will explain a little bit later. Now let's get back to our semitendinosus muscle. The semitendinosus muscle is innervated by the sciatic nerve and it serves for the flexion of the knee joint and the extension of the hip joint. Then we have the semimembranosus muscle. It is this muscle here. And the semimembranosus muscle has the origin also on the ischial tuberosity. That's here, the semimembranosus muscle. The insertion of this muscle is actually the medial surface of tibia and it does not insert on the facet serenus but the medial surface of tibia. This muscle is also innervated by the sciatic nerve and it serves for the knee joint flexion and the hip extension. Now here we see the antagonist of the hamstring muscles and that is the quadriceps femoris. I have talked about this big muscle in previous lesson. So now you can see how they antagonize each other. They're on completely other side of the leg. Now I should talk about the medial compartment. As you can see there is a huge gap here and we will fill this gap very soon with new muscles. Again everyone, this is Matt from CanHub, and in this short tutorial, we are going to talk about the origin, insertion, and function of the quadriceps femoris. The quadriceps femoris muscle is a four-headed muscle of the thigh which almost completely covers the femur. The quadriceps is among the strongest muscles in the human body and significantly forms the lateral contours and the ventral side of the thigh. Its innervation is carried by the femoral nerve. It consists of four separate muscles, the rectus femoris, 
the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis, and the vastus intermedius. We will discuss the insertion and origin of each one individually. The rectus femoris muscle has two origins at the anterior inferior iliac spine of the pelvis and the upper margin of the acetabulum. Distally, its fibers end in the common insertion tendon, which is also known as the quadriceps tendon. The vastus medialis muscle runs spirally around the shaft from the linea aspera and intertrochanteric line of the femur and merges with the quadriceps tendon for the most part. A second part, referred to as medial patellar retinaculum, bypasses the patella medially and inserts at the medial condyle of the tibia. The vastus lateralis muscle originates at the linea aspera and greater trochanter of the femur, loops around the shaft, and mainly runs into the quadriceps tendon. Mirror inverted to the vastus medialis muscle, a small part goes around the patella laterally and inserts at the lateral condyle of the tibia, also known as the lateral patellar retinaculum. The vastus intermedius muscle begins at the front side of the femur and ends in the common insertion tendon. In the height of the patellar base, a small part splits off and inserts at the suprapatellar recess of the knee joint capsule, also known as the articularis genus muscle. Even though it does not count as an independent muscle, it is sometimes considered as the fifth head of the quadriceps. The quadriceps tendon runs above the ventral side and through the periosteum of the patella and finally inserts at the tuberosity of the tibia. The part below the patellar apex is referred to as the patellar ligament, seen here in green. The quadriceps is the only extensor of the knee joint. It plays a key role in every movement involving the stretching of the knee, and in addition, it keeps the knee from buckling when standing. Furthermore, the rectus femoris muscle forces a flexion of the hip joint. To a small extent, the vastus medialis muscle is involved in the internal rotation and the vastus lateralis muscle in the external rotation of the knee joint. The articularis genus muscle is directly linked to the knee joint capsule and the suprapatellar bursa. During the knee extension, it pulls both structures proximally and by this means prevents their entrapment between patella and femur.